has uh, Travis here at Outpost Range. Uh, today we're going to discuss some things uh, that are very relative to um, the time now, you know, in our country and uh, pretty much around the world. Uh, being prepared to have to uh, leave your home and be safe and quick about it. So we're going to cover bug out bag uh, options, uh, some things to think about when you are preparing, and uh, some uh, essential stuff that you would need with you for sure, and then some additional items that uh, you could definitely carry with you to make things easier. So we'll start with the bag itself, okay? Over here, uh, this is just an option, okay? Please understand the things that we are discussing. They're not necessarily specific brand requirements or even that option itself, just things to think about as far as the tools and accessories themselves. So here we have your standard uh, tri-pocket molly webbing, um, small compact tactical bag, okay? Very lightweight, it's got some padding here on the back as you can see, it will definitely help if you're you know, carrying it over long distances for an extended period of time. Also keep in mind everything that we're discussing here today. This is items that you would need to help sustain yourself for a minimum of, of three to five days uh, until you're able to find a more permanent place to call your, your new home, if you will, or even a base of operations while you're continuing your, your movement, okay? We got these, uh, your pads here on your straps, carry handle at the top, Inside, you've got some additional pockets as well. Uh, this one here is a uh, somewhat waterproof pocket. You can put some essential stuff in there if you need to. You got the mesh compartment here. It's got some uh, elastic retention to it. The second pocket here, again, it's got some additional mod uh, pockets in it with the uh, mesh and the elasticity to help keep them in place. You can put things like here, we have instructions for flow charts for medical purposes. Smaller bag or pouch up front here, uh, and then you've got the Final patch in the very front, again, with some accessory pouches and whatnot, things that you could put some additional medical stuff if you need to. All this stuff is for modular packing, okay? The molly webbing on the front of the, the, the bag itself in different areas, as you can see, you got them on the front pouch, your top small pouch on the sides as well here, okay? You can use them for different things, attaching accessories to, such as this IFAT here, okay? Having a, an IFAC like this, in which we'll cover some other medical options as well. Uh, these are always good to have it uh, on your kit, strapped, ready to go. That way you don't have to think. And if you do move too fast and you didn't have a good medical setup, at least you have this IFAC to help you in case of emergency. All right, moving on from the bag. Obviously the first thing that you always wanna be prepared for is having a source of water. Water is the most essential thing for us when it comes to survival. Unfortunately, it can also be the hardest thing for us to find. There is a lot of new types of equipment out there. So we have a few here, some things for you to consider and think about. Just grabbing a water bottle and hitting the road is probably not the best idea, all right? If you've had any survival training, learning how to procure water is definitely a essential task or something uh, as far as needing to know so you can survive. Rule of threes, right? Three days without water, three weeks without food, okay? So uh, food is, you know, not really high up on our list, okay? The types of things you can use, all right? You have these lifesaver straws, right? Or the life straw, uh, really compact, very, very good source uh, of water, right? It's a filter, obviously. You can stick it in your, your bug out bag and you don't really have to think about much. You get thirsty, you could find, you know, a water hole, all right, a mud puddle, and you can drink that water through this life straw. This life straw is going to last you, without a doubt, you know, three to five days. It'll last you a lot longer than that. Um, so if you can even grab yourself a couple of these, it'd be good. You do have replacement filters you can purchase for them as well. Here we have a water bottle, right? The Rapid Pure. Now again, it does not have to be brand specific, okay? It's just an option, something for you to think about. Giving you the ability to carry water with you. Uh, it has a filter built into the, the water bottle system. So you can fill the water bottle as you drink it. It's filtering the water. Again, one less thing you have to worry about, right? Because if we're getting water from a, a specific source, we always want to make sure that we're boiling that water if we don't have a water filter, right? Boiling water for a minimum of, of 15 minutes, you know, is key. 
uh, but in a in a rush, five to ten minutes, uh, that's at a a full on uh, rolling boil. Having these options though is definitely going to be vital when it comes to setting up your your bug out bag. All right, once we've established that we have our water source taken care of, next we move on to fire. All right. So having options to keep dry or to get dry or to dry things out or to cook things, right? Uh, or if you don't have something like this for your water to be filtered properly, being able to have a fire to boil your water before you drink it. It's gonna be very debilitating. It's going to increase your dehydration and definitely could take you out of the game, all right? Again, a lot of things out there that you can utilize in your bug out bag, right? We've got all these new fancy types of fire starters, okay? This one here has a lid, so it keeps the actual spark rod itself dry. Not really a necessary thing. However, it's there, okay? Definitely gonna be easier for you when you do need to start a fire. That way you're not having to carry a lighter. Uh, lighters fail, you know, the wicks can get wet. The spark mechanism can be faulty. You can lose them very easily. I'm sure everybody has lost a lighter to somebody or some something before, right? You can pick up stuff like this here, this fancy little pack, right? It's Tinder Quick, right? Uh, it is easy to get a spark to catch fire. It'll burn for approximately two minutes. Uh, you can use it as your, um, your obvious Tinder to get a larger fire going, all right? Again, very uh, small and compact easy to fit. But just to be safe, I would recommend carrying it in something like this case here, okay? Now this is a Pelican case, it's small, uh, very compact, but it's waterproof, all right? Uh, you keep it in this, attach it to your bag inside, okay? Uh, it won't get lost, hopefully, right? Anything you can do to keep these uh, fire sources dry. Staying dry and, and stuff that would uh, normally would be part of our medical uh, kits, but I'm putting it in the stay dry section of this video. Having the Mylar uh, style blankets, emergency blankets, they're very good uh, to carry with you. Obviously you can see there are different brands, types, sizes, all right? For bug out bag purposes, depending on the size of bug out bag that you are uh, preparing for yourself, you know, it's your call, okay? All this stuff is preference, is opposed, or in reference to what you want to have with you in the event that you have to uh, take off quickly, okay? So, one style or the other, they both do the same thing. Obviously, the thicker uh, blankets are gonna keep you warm better, all right? They'll absorb a little bit more, retain that heat, um, but for emergency purposes, okay? A safe and dry bag, all right, these are Definitely awesome things to have in your kit. There's a lot of different brands of these now as well. Uh, anything you can do to keep those essential items dry, right? If you have to uh, cross a waterway or you, you know, have additional garments, socks, or something like that that you have thrown in there, keep them in this. All right, so moving on to food sources, all right? So again, uh, even finding food, depending on where you, you live, uh, the environment where you are, are in the United States, Having an emergency food source available to use is, is definitely gonna be key, right? Because we never know if we're gonna be able to find uh, a abundant source of food, whether it's vegetation, um, wildlife, um, anything like that, okay? So those of you out there that you don't have, you know, impeccable hunting skills, really, you know, consider this, okay? Um, again, just options, right? So beef jerky is always a great thing to have in a bug out bag. Again, it doesn't have to be jack links. If you can make your own, make your own. Wrap it in some uh, uh, Ziploc bags, right? Carry it with you. Dried beef, it lasts a long time. It's not really gonna go bad on you. You can munch on it as you go. Uh, these protein bars, now there's a lot of protein bars out there, so you know, do due diligence. Find out what's gonna be best for you, has the, the most protein in it. Buy a few of them, keep them in there. Again, emergency use only, right? Uh, then we also have meals like this here, okay? Uh, I know some of you out there most likely have MREs. Awesome, MREs are great, high calorie uh, intake, right? Now, those of us who have done nothing but lived off MREs for a long time, I'm gonna go with the Mountain House meals myself, all right? So, I personally do keep several of these in my truck. I keep several of them in my bug out bag. Mountain House is an amazing food source. Very fast, 
uh, very easy, very high uh, energy output, lots of calories, and uh, it actually tastes pretty good too, okay? Again, you have different options for the type of food that uh, you could have, okay? There's a bunch of different types of emergency meal rations out there. Now, we don't have it on display here, but something very, very simple to obtain that is very high in, in calories and fat, peanut butter, okay? Uh, while I was in the military, especially being uh, in the places that I would be, you can take a spoonful of it, you can dip your fingers into it, take a big scoop out of it that way. Uh, it's high in fat, like I said, high calories, uh, emergency rations, throw it in your mouth, down your gullet, you're good to go for a while, okay, and give you a couple hours of energy, right? Uh, you can also do other things, throw a couple honey buns in your kit, okay? Yes, it may not be the most uh, healthy thing to eat, but in emergency situations, when it comes to needing a food source, who cares about being healthy as long as you have the energy to get to a place where you can set up and start having healthier options for your food, okay? Once you've established uh, a place that you can hang out and find better options for food and water, uh, establishing a shelter, right? Building a shelter for yourself. Some things that you would need for a shelter, okay? Uh, well, for any amount of purposes, really, 550 cord, paracord, all right, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 500 feet, approximately, uh, is a good starting uh, length for this stuff. This stuff is very good, comes in very handy. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can use it for lashing, you can use it for hanging items, you can use it for creating bridgeways, if you will, across waterways to run your gear across, all kinds of things, right? Hold up to 550 pounds. Now, I wouldn't you know, recommend putting two of you, you know, yourself and a friend on there and trying to repel, but in a, in a quick instance, it could work out for you, all right? D-rings. So you can see this one on here. Now this D-ring that's on here really isn't very good, okay? I would recommend buying yourself some good heavy tensile strength uh, D-rings, all right? There's a lot of them out there. Again, do some research, find out which ones are best. The really good ones are gonna be expensive, but you know, having a, a couple good ones, it's worth the money. Duct tape, right? Can never go wrong with duct tape, okay? You got a couple small rolls here in this kit. If you have your own at home, throw it in your, uh, your bug out bag, uh, duct tape will always come in handy. Here we have a uh, signal mirror. Now, you know, signal mirror, you never know, you might need to actually get somebody's attention, right? Whether it's on a, in the air, on the ground, on the water, right? Having something as simple as this could literally save your life. We got some zip ties here, okay? Again, very compact, easy to store, easy to maintain. Throw that in your kit. You never know when you could use zip ties, all right? Okay, so some cutting tools, right? We get to the cutting tools. Now some of these, Come as kits, right? This saw here. Now, having a handsaw, definitely good to have. Uh, is it necessary? Not exactly, but if you have the room in your bug out bag and you can throw a handsaw in there, you might as well, right? Because it's just going to make things easier when you do start building shelters, uh, and stuff like that. Okay. So um, this kit here just happens to come with a fire uh, flint stick as well. So you have options with that. Here we have this large. Uh, saw kukri. Now the kukri, in my opinion, definitely one of the better types of blades uh, to have out uh, with you as a survival tool. They come in a, a range of sizes, okay? Uh, obviously different brands and, and stuff like that as well. Uh, do the research, figure out which one works for you. This one here is 18 inches overall length, uh, weighs about 15 ounces. Uh, it easily could be put in its sheath, which is uh, comes with the, the kit itself and can be stowed on the side of your pack here, right? Uh, fits into the molly webbing here. Uh, again, zip tie the, uh, the sheath to the side, to the molly webbing, put your kukri in there, you're good to go. Uh, if you need a large, hefty cutting tool uh, to chop down stuff or something like that, definitely uh, is good in a pinch and would help if you're having to use it on uh, small game, right? Rabbits, snakes, stuff like that. Having a smaller uh, utility knife, if you will, okay? Uh, now, it's not necessarily a utility knife, more of a K-bar style. Uh, this cold steel, now, again, there's lots of different brands of knives out there. This SRK is definitely a, a decent knife to have in your bug out bag. Real hard uh, steel here, all right? 
Um, it's a solid piece. The tang is actually goes down into the grip. So the odds of it snapping and breaking on you are minimal. And then we get down to something like a pocket knife. Okay, now this here, just a, a basic pocket knife. A couple different styles of folding blades that are in there, right? Different things you can use it for. Uh, they have obviously hundreds and hundreds of options for these style knives as well. Swiss knives are also very good, right? They are a utility knife <laughs> for all purposes, right? Uh, but still having something like that small fits in your pocket, emergency use, if you need a blade real fast, you don't have to take your kukri out, you don't have to come out of your, uh, your sheath here with your cold steel, you can pull this out, do what you gotta do, okay? Our medical stuff, any type of, of basic first aid kit is always going to be a valuable asset with any bug out bag, okay? Again, lots of options out there. Uh, this is a very basic medical kit, but it's very compact, zips up. You can put it in your bug out bag, forget, you're ready to go, don't have to worry about it, all right? Uh, making sure that you have things in it, you know, that are gonna be useful, okay? So having a, your bag here that's got a basic um, elastic bandage, some medical tape, some gloves, uh, this fancy little red um, forcep style tweezer, uh, some tongue depressors, stuff like that, right? Q-tips, burn cream, band-aids, uh, iodine or uh, uh, alcohol wipes of some sort, right? Something to sterilize wounds if you, if you do get cut or, or scraped or something like that, okay? Some things also that you could ask, add, all right, you've got these um, new small medical packs like this, right, this blister medic here, right, um, you're moving a lot, you know, your feet get wet, tend to get blisters pretty easy, so definitely something that will help so you can stay moving, uh, not having to worry so much about the pain from your feet, okay. Uh, here we have this glacier gel, all right, again, this is something you can use for blisters and burns also, all right. Lots of different stuff out there. Like I've said several times, do the research, figure out what is gonna be best for your medical kit and run with it. Uh, here, a little bit more of an, uh, an advanced item, I guess, if you will, but is uh, a chest seal, okay? In the event that for some reason, maybe you have been in a conflict of some sort while you're on the move, all right? Maybe you had to get out of your, your house uh, quickly or the area that you're living in and you did sustain an injury or you come across somebody who sustained an injury, right? Uh, something as simple as this would definitely help uh, with a sucking chest wound or something, you know, like similar to that, okay? You can also add things into your medical kit uh, such as quick clot. You can use Israeli, Israeli bandages, uh, cold packs, all, you know, all those types of things. So as far as medical stuff, these are just basic items, okay? A tourniquet, right? Everybody should have a tourniquet, okay? A lot of times these kits here, these medical kits for uh, the IFAC setups will come with tourniquets and some other basic items as well. Uh, some other things that, that we don't really think about that definitely are going to be crucial items in my opinion, okay? Um, if you can find little tools like this, okay, this little spoon, right? Definitely going to make life a little bit simpler so you're not having to use your hands because our hands are filthy all the time. Uh, when we're on the move, right, we can't really stop and, and uh, sanitize our hands all the time, okay? Having something like this to throw in your kit. This one here specifically is a spoon and a knife or a spork and a knife. <laughs> it has the spoon surface with the fork uh, tongs at the front and then it can be pulled apart and there's a plastic knife inside as well. Very easy to fit into your bug out bag. Uh, here we have a very compact cooking utensil kit, all right? Now, if you are on the more delicate side and you need to cook and boil your food in something like this, this is a good option, okay? It has three different types of uh, pots in here. They fit on top of each other, into each other, and you can just take them apart, put them back together after you've cleaned them, put them in this little pouch, zip it up, throw it in your bug out bag. A hat, all right, let's talk about the hat, ladies and gentlemen. So this hat here, I've had this for years and years and years. Uh, it's one of those items uh, that 
it could be 10 degrees outside and I could literally be standing in the tire that I'm in right now. And as long as I have this hat to put on my head, I'll be okay. I'll be warm enough. Uh, but I'll be good to go, right? Largest vent on our body, our head, okay? As long as we keep our head covered uh, with a decent uh, type of, of uh, garment, right? It'll definitely help us stay warmer, right? And stay comfortable. And uh, those of you out there that are like me and have no hair, definitely gonna come in handy, right? Uh, so, other things, something small, right? Really small set of binos, okay? You never know, it could be useful to have a set of binos. So I do recommend if you can find something, this is a very small, compact, uh, basic Bushnell style bino. And uh, I've had these for a long time as well. Um, obviously you can see they're used and dirty, okay? But I've, I've used them quite a bit and they do come in very handy, okay? Uh, a notebook. So if you want to have something such as a notebook with you, uh, who knows, you may need it, okay? Uh, having one of these waterproof, right in the rain uh, style notebooks is definitely good to have. If anything, at least you have a source of, of tinder, right? You got paper, you can use it to burn, but if you do need to write things down, uh, your coordinates, maybe a diagram of some sort, you're trying to keep information there, uh, at least use of something like this, it won't wash away or get ruined. Uh, and then we come down to, you know, some of the more essential stuff, right? Your firearm, okay? Uh, when you're grabbing your bug out bag and you're rolling out, obviously it's an emergency uh, situation. So grab your, your trusty firearm, right? Uh, now myself, this clear? Myself, uh, this Block 19 I've had for a long time. Uh, obviously you can see I've done modifications to it. Uh, it's an old firearm, but it's very dependable, reliable, especially when it comes to weather, right? Um, I can very easily grab this, throw it in my holster, grab my bag, and I can roll out. Very common caliber, right? Nine millimeter. So having that nine millimeter uh, ammo is going to be key. And uh, your rifle, if you have a lightweight rifle, uh, some sort of semi-auto. Now a bolt action is always going to be good, uh, but having the capability of that fire superiority with a semi-automatic firearm, uh, M4, AR platform of some sort, uh, your more common rounds, okay, 223, 556, 308, or 762 by 51. Uh, definitely gonna be something you wanna think about. What should I bring? Where should I bring them? How am I going to bring them? Those sort of things. Uh, the weapon system that you carry, you gotta carry ammo for it, right? So remember that's gonna be additional weight, all right? Uh, this is really just a, a, a brief overview of things that you uh, should have, things that you can have. Uh, again, nothing here is specific to brand or manufacturer or style, okay? You can make your bug out bag to fit what you want, all right? Uh, the size of the bag, the type of gear you're going to have in it, it's, it's all preference, okay? So with that being said, uh, we do carry a lot of items here in-house at Outpost Range. If uh, you want to come down and uh, you like what you see in the video, any one of us here in the shop will help you get started, point you in the right direction, and uh, you know get you going on your, your bug out setup. Again, I'm Travis. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope that it was helpful uh, at least a little. And if you have any questions, just give us a call.